Hi everyone, we're talking all about muzzling animals. In today's page here inside the Gemara, we are now in Sadiq Aleph of Masechet, Bava Matsya friends over here. We've been learning in the previous stuff with regards to the laws of muzzling animals and we very much continue it in today's page. Some toy animals over here and let's get this started underway. These aren't real... Uh, Real animals here, so uh, it doesn't really apply when we're talking about uh, toy animals. But the Gemara quotes actually a brayta that teaches that if someone is threshing grain with his friend's animal and he muzzles the animal so that it will not eat, the person will be held responsible on two different levels of his friends. Which two levels of here is he responsible? First of all, he will be liable to receive lashes. For transgressing the biblical prohibition against muzzling an animal while it is working. This naturally from Pasuk in Sefer the Barim in chapter 25, verse number 4. And also the second Nukuda, uh, let's just say the second point is, he will be obligated to pay the owner the amount of money for the feed that the animal would have eaten during that specific time. So the Gemara, however, is going to object to this ruling, arguing that this actually in itself negates a well-known axiom of Jewish law. This axiom is called Kim Lei Deraba Minei. What is this? Kim Lei Ber Deraba Minei means that it is enough for a person to receive the more severe punishment. If a person commits an act for which he is liable to receive, let's say, two separate punishments, Jewish law will only allow him to be punished once, i.e. he will receive the more severe of the two punishments and be freed in retribution of the lesser punishment. Thus, if a person performs an act for which he would receive both capital punishment and lashes, he will not receive the lashes as the capital punishment will suffice as punishment for this act over here. Similarly, once a person receives lashes, he will not have to pay over here, that in turn. So several explanations are offered in response to this question over here. The great uh, sage Abaya simply suggests, suggests that this follows the opinion of another great rabbi, Rabbi Meir, who rules that a person can receive both Malkut lashes and be required to pay. There's such a thing where both will apply. According, however, to Rabbi Papa, in our case, the two obligations take effect at different Times from the moment that the farmer accepted the animal to use for threshing, he became obligated to feed the animal. He did not become liable though to receive lashes until he muzzled the animal over here. So very, very much interesting. It's more continuing the theme where we left off in the page yesterday where we spoke all about muzzling animals. Now we, it's taken another tangent over here. And uh, yeah, you've got animals, you've got to follow the code of conduct over here when working with them, when they are threshing, whatever it might be, and uh, so on and so forth. Guys, I would like to uh, dedicate this to uh, Shmat for Huba Ben Esso, who suddenly passed away. Please do acts of kindness in his memory. Any good deeds you can do in his memory, always uh, important. We appreciate it. And I wish you all a great day. Take care. Don't forget to watch over. The previous already, we are on pretty much uh, 90 classes already in this uh, in this uh, Masechet itself. So take care and enjoy.